Welcome to the driest place on planet Earth, the Atacama Desert. Located in northern Chile, this region is known for four things. Number one, lagoons said to be saltier than the Dead Sea. Number two, landscapes like the surface of the moon. Number three, llamas. And number four, the best stargazing in the world. And our challenge is to show you all four in the next 72 hours. Good morning, it's currently nine in the morning and we're one of the first people to get to these lagoons. So it's super empty and quiet right now and I love it. We've just paid the entry fee of 15,000 Chilean pesos each. So here there are three lagoons and there's only one you can actually swim in. Uh, but let's go check out the others first. So here we have it. This is the first lagoon, although we're quite far away. And just being in Chile and like the San Pedro de Atacama for a few days, we've realized it is quite restrictive here. You have to book a lot of things in advance. You can't always get that close. There's lots of entry fees. And I think most of the time they want you to take the tours rather than self-drive. But if I'm honest, self-driving is the best way. So we have arrived at the lagoon, the oasis in the middle of the desert in which we can swim in. And the special thing about this is it's super salty. So apparently floating is like incredible. Also, we're literally just walking on salt right now. It is a bit like the Bolivian salt flats, but just much drier with these little pools. <laughs> I've never been to the Dead Sea, so I'm quite excited to see what it feels like to float. It's not that cold. It's not that cold. Yeah, but we're not in the deep bit yet. <sighs> It's a little bit cold. <laughs> it's getting colder. I think Amelia is going to go for a little swim. Or a little float. <laughs> is it really easy to float? Yeah. I'm not swimming. This is weird. You look like a, like a, I don't know, a rubber duck in a bath. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. It's not that cold, you baby. It's so weird. It feels like you're being pushed out. No hands. You look like a weirdo. It is so salty. I accidentally just put some in my mouth. <laughs> Look at all my skin, there is just oh salt scaled on it. Luckily they do actually have showers here, so <laughs> let's go shower. Look at the side of Joel's face. Like, look at this. <laughs> I am so salty. I'm like a sea salt crisp or chips as they say in the US. Imagine if you found this spot in the middle of the desert. You'd be like, oh, amazing water. But you definitely couldn't drink that because Oh, that would make you ill. So That's ill. So salty. Like as soon as it like a little bit goes near your mouth, you're just like, bleh, bleh. <laughs> look how dry this area is. Like I don't know when the last time it rained. Probably months and months ago. It just looks so dry. Just over these mountains over here is Bolivia, and we were there just a few days ago, and it rains quite a lot there. But the Andes just stop the rain coming here. He is washing all these salt off. It's cold water. <laughs> the desert is not warm, guys. Apart from about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And then 2 p.m. it just like goes straight to boiling. Oh. Ah, so warm in the car. Wow, that was such a cool experience and I've never done anything like that. Just floating. Anyway, that's our first thing ticked off our bucket list and we've still got to do the other four. This afternoon we're actually heading really far south because apparently around there is a really good chance of seeing llamas and flamingos. Right guys, we've just had some lunch and now we are driving to Soquer, which is the town before the next place that we're going. We'll tell you about that when we get there. But you actually have to check in and that's one of the things we found here in Chile. There's a lot of rules so we're going to go sign our names in and then head on to our next location. We're just pulling into the forest reception. This nice. place is like the smallest little village you've ever seen. We checked in, it was just this random lady and she gave us this piece of paper, so I think that means we're checked in. And we can now go up to 4,000 meters. Llamas! We've just seen llamas. Where are they? They're, they're a bit back there. They're quite far away though, but we have seen them. Does that count? We'll try and see them closer, but if not, we'll give that a little half tick for on our bucket list. We're now only five minutes away from our next spot and we are about 4,000 meters up and you can really feel it. I think we're both getting a bit more out of breath yeah. and we're not even doing anything. We're just sat in the car. I'm just talking and I'm like, I need to breathe here. Eh? <laughs> it's, it's quite a difference to 2,500 meters. Whoa, this is so sick. This is like another world. Like suddenly we just came over this mountain and it's like, completely did, like crazy colors we have just changed our clothes because it is so much colder up here at 4100 meters 
It's very windy as well. So guys, this is Salar de Caliente, if I'm saying that right. And it's known as like this red rock area with a big old salt flat. And as you can see behind me, you can start to see the salt flat. Crazy different colors and landscapes and just nothing like I've seen ever before. We do have quite the outfit on. We've got all these like warm clothes on and then we also have our Birkenstocks on. How are you doing with the cold, hey? I'm good. Do you know, it's not actually cold. The sun is so warm, but the wind is hot. Harsh. This is another example of like the Chilean kind of way where everything's very orderly and bureaucratic. And you basically have to follow all these signs. You can only go one way. Whereas in Bolivia, it was so different. You could just do what you want. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's flamingos here, but we are still on the hunt for flamingos. Not hunting, but looking for flamingos. So here we are. I've forgotten the name. It's like Roja something. But look, so this is big salt like salt flat salt lagoon thing and look at all the salt which is gathered down below it looks so like otherworldly ah! we've just left now and it's 4 p.m and there's only two other people actually in the area so if you want to try and avoid the crowds don't come in the morning or like just after lunch come later in the day and you'll most likely avoid people there is a llama on the road right now this is so cool this is Apart from seeing them very far away, this is actually our first time seeing llamas. I don't actually think that's a llama though, I think it's like a piccolo? I think that's, that's a, actually a coffee. That's a... <laughs> but it's something like that. We'll there, it on the okay, screen. so there's a llamas, alpacas, and there's another thing apparently they were telling us in Bolivia, but I think it's that, but honestly we have no idea when our knowledge of llamas and that kind of species is not very great. We have just pulled off on the side of the road because before we get back to San Pedro town, it's literally like 20 minutes away, we want to stop off, have a good sunset and then tick off another thing on our bucket list and that is to see the stars the Milky Way. Why is Atacama Desert like one of the best places in the world to see the stars? Firstly, we're already 2,500 meters up so it's like less atmosphere to look up at the stars at. That makes sense. Secondly, because we're in the desert, there's hardly any light pollution. There's only a few small towns around here. So as soon as you go away from the towns, it is so dark outside. As it is so good for seeing stars, there's lots of telescopes and like space station stuff around here. And they do lots of research about the stars. There's big telescopes. You can go like look through them if you go on a tour, which I'll leave a link in the description. So if you want to do that, you can. The light has dropped and we are alone in the middle of the desert. It's so quiet. It's eerily quiet. It's actually kind of scary. <laughs> I know this sounds weird, but I've never heard this level of silence. You can hear a bit of wind and maybe a dog 10 kilometers away. But apart from that, there is nothing. And even though it is still pretty bright outside, we've got our first star of the evening. There's actually quite a few appearing already. Oh, wow, yeah. We don't have any internet because obviously we're in the middle of the desert, but we haven't checked whether you can see the Milky Way tonight. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. There are a lot of stars above us. It is still about an hour until it's pitch black, like the darkest it can get all night. And then the stars and hopefully the Milky Way. It's gonna do its business. No way, the Milky Way is straight over the top. More stars are appearing every second. This is mental. Right now, there is the most stars I have seen in my life. We're only gonna be able to show you actually what it's like through some photos because I've tried on video and it's just too difficult, but it is mental. And the only thing you can do is come here to actually see them yourself. Good afternoon then guys. This morning we had a little bit of trouble and we tried to go to one of the lesser known lagoons because it's supposed to be absolutely beautiful. But the road was absolutely terrible. Oh no guys, I'm a little bit worried because we haven't seen one car since we started this road. If we get a flat tire, if we get stuck, we are literally we could die out here. I'm not sure if you can see the road surface, but it is not very good. I can just feel the car tires just rattling and rattling. We're going about 15 k's an hour. We are leaving. Anyway, we ended up taking a tour and the lagoons were beautiful. They were even more beautiful than the ones we went to yesterday. But the journey there was very rough. I'm glad we didn't go in our own car because we actually got stuck on the way back. Just checking the time. 
We have just entered Val de Luna and it was 10,000 each for entry and they've given us a map and we just drive around and see what we find. We are driving through this Mars-like landscape, these massive rocks. This is like one of the most popular things to do here in San Pedro de Atacama. Let's see how it's gonna be. We have started the first hike around this valley and we've chosen to do this at the hottest time of the day. So don't ask me why, but we have. <laughs> oh. It's a very hot and strong sun here. I don't. I think the UV must be ridiculous because we have been getting a little bit burnt even though we're wearing sun cream. I'm getting hot already. <laughs> we've only been walking five minutes. So far our time here in Atacama has been absolutely beautiful and the scenery is amazing. But they do make it very difficult to kind of self-drive this thing. I think the government are trying to push people to take the tours and spend more money because a lot of the tours are actually very expensive and actually renting a car and doing it yourself is a lot cheaper and also the more freedom you get. The other thing is there are so many opening times and ticket reservations. So if you are coming here, make sure you plan ahead, do your research because we've even found it really hard to find out what things you need to reserve, what times things open. And another thing is the Wi-Fi here is so bad across the town. It's really difficult to research whilst you're here. So please do your planning ahead of time because we are struggling to find anything out. So here we have two ways. And we're going the shorter way, which is only half an hour because that's an hour and a half. So we've just reached the top of the dune and it's here on our right. It looks absolutely pristine. Obviously there are a lot of rules as we were saying, but that does mean a lot of the nature has been preserved and it is just beautiful. It's like an oven in here. Oh, over the window. We've explored some of the other areas of Val de Luna, but unfortunately, because it is closing in on eight o'clock, we've got to leave the park. But if you want to actually spend sunset around here, then you actually have to do a sunset tour. You can't do it in your own car. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you don't know, Val de Luna in Spanish actually means Valley of the Moon because it does look like the surface of the moon. As we exit this area out here in front of us, you can see the volcano and the other side of that volcano is Bolivia and that's where we came across from Uyuni. For our last morning in San Pedro we wanted to take you back into this town to show you a little bit around because it is such a beautiful area and they've done it really nicely here. One of the things we've been doing for breakfast here is going to the French bakery because they have the best croissants and it's actually not too expensive compared to everything else in this town. Look at this. Oh, oh, that is the real deal. It's about 2,000 pesos. A lot of things, especially food in this town, is very expensive. And if you are going to do a lot of tours, then that's also going to add up a lot. But by just having a little bakery, saves you a bit of money. So this town is obviously very made up for tourists as there's tour agencies everywhere, restaurants, cafes, and everything is very expensive, as I've said. Before our time is over here in San Pedro, we're gonna head to one more spot, which is about half an hour outside the town. And it's supposed to be free and a little bit different to the other spots. This spot is quite unique for this area as it actually has some running water. And as it's the driest place on earth, that is very rare but they also do have some cactuses here. So truly feel like we are in the desert. So I don't know if you can hear, but down this canyon, there is some running water. I think there is a little waterfall somewhere. I have no idea where it is. We've managed to find a way down to the river. It looks super fresh. I think it's coming off the Andes mountain range. So probably gonna be probably drinkable. I'm not in the best hiking gear right now. We weren't prepared for this. Whoa, the water is so clear here. We've literally found like a little desert oasis. These are like the greenest plants, greenest stuff we've seen since we've actually landed here in South America. Look how fresh and clear this is. It looks drinkable. Whoa, this looks like a little shelter or something. It looks like people used to live in here in cave times. I wonder if anyone actually knows whether people used to live in these like caves near the oasis because it would make sense and this looks like it's been built it doesn't look natural so cool well this could be like a little oven or something like a little fire in there after showing you one of the driest places on earth we have ended up in this beautiful little oasis in the middle of the atacama desert thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it like and subscribe hit that subscribe button for loads more 
epic South American video. So hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.